Hi guys, this is Rob again with another rubber toe assembly. Today we're going to show you the lifetime 52 inch portable basketball hoop shatterproof steel frame backboard. Uh, the assembly, this is how I assemble these things. I've done so many of them. First thing I do is unbox it. I take the top cover of the box and lay it down just as you see there and put all the hardware bags on top of there so you can build everything on cardboard uh, and then the base is uh, they wrap it now in like a shrink wrap plastic so all the pieces stay intact I just lay it down cardboard side to the ground and I'm gonna peel that shrink wrap off just cut it carefully <coughs> and peel it off and all of your parts, not all of them, but most of them are underneath that piece of cardboard. Discard that if you want. And uh, you'll see the pieces here. A bunch of uh, steel tubes that are uh, brackets that will attach the backboard to the pole and other tube brackets that will attach the base to the pole and hold it firmly to the to the base, which is that big black plastic piece there. It's upside down there. They keep all of the hardware in those little notches. <clears throat> and then there's two wheels, one of them to the right you see there, kind of rolling on the cardboard. There's a second one there to also. They'll be installed shortly here in the beginning. As you see there, I bring it around, lay it upside down, as you see there. And then there is three pole pieces. A bottom pole, which is the short one, a middle pole and then a top pole which has holes in the top. The middle pole has a couple of holes at the bottom for screws but other than that nothing's gonna no big holes are, are in it. And then there's two holes in the bottom piece. The bottom piece is the one with the sticker and it has a little indentation. If you don't have a sticker look at the pole most of them have a little indentation. You can, I always connect the bottom pole and the middle pole first. It's just easier for me that way and I line up the holes there's two holes two small holes it's always the one to the right if you see you take a look and you find both holes on that middle piece little screw holes that you're gonna and attach it to and it's always the one to the right and you line that up with the groove here on the top piece I'm gonna show you see there's that little hole and this little hole and it's the one to the right and you line it up with just what you see there the, the little slot in the top of the middle hole. That's the same way the bottom piece goes on too. <clears throat> and so, and then you're going to tap these on a piece of wood or in um, cardboard there in this side. Not on the concrete or any kind of finished driveway because it might go through the cardboard and make little circle marks on your concrete. Not good. So, right there in the streets, usually fine on cardboard and in the street. That works best. But give it a couple of taps, then I flip it over upside down give it a couple of taps there and then uh, I'll come back later and put some little um, screws inside those holes on the slots going pretty quick here scoop up the uh, one of the wheels on the axle what I call the axle that goes through there and uh, moving right along here it's very important you get these poles correct once you tap them down it's it's uh, it's permanent. I mean, I've pulled them apart before in the past, but it is not easy at all. And it, a couple of times I've had to call the store and get a, another pole a long, long time ago. So <clears throat> uh, you'll see the little groove there, the indentation at the bottom of that yellow sticker. See how it's indentation? Because when you move it, that's going to be close to the ground. They don't want that curved part to scrape the concrete or any kind of anybody's driveway so that's why they put that little indentation there crimp it and the sticker clearly says you know this is the front so as you see the axle goes through that wheel as I've already got through all those holes through the pole lined up through there and then into the hole on the other side of the base and I tap it through with the hammer or a mallet would be better it's less noisy also <coughs> I just pop that on there, lined up perfect with the axle, and then I just bang it through to right about that point. Then I usually grab a uh, 
some kind of an extension or maybe a little block of wood sometimes I have just keep everything nice here it is an extension and I put that as you see there give it a couple of taps poof and it's in it's past that little point and I like about a quarter of an inch on each side so I just use the hammer and as you can see a finger space on each side wheels roll nice there you have it so now that the wheels are going through uh, the wheels are installed and they're going through the pole and the base everything's connected there at the bottom uh, my next step is grab the two bars that go from the base to the pole and there's a special hardware kit for that as well in the instructions you open up that bag and it has all the hardware for just attaching this only you want to only finger tighten these uh, three areas where they're going to put bolts here there's a big bag of screws everything kind of looks the same if this is your first time doing it you're going to think everything looks the same so as you can see uh, there's like six or seven different bags this is the one with all of the hardware in it for attaching the pole to the base and I lined up the two bars that are going to connect the pole to the base I grab the hardware I need I put the washers on the two little bolts put one washer on each one of them and then I use one put it through as you see there through the hole at the bottom of that pole and that's the flat part that's going to connect to the base the other end of that pole has a little bit of an angled bend to it that's the part that's going to connect to the pole you can see right there boom right up against the pole is a little angled side and then uh, after you put the washer and the bolt through those holes as you see there I have a washer and a nut that goes on the back side and I just hand tighten it put the washer first and then hand tighten it I'll come back later and tighten these the other side goes on same way so you do both of these, that's how I do it, I pop it through once it's all the way through I just swing it and kinda lean it against the pole there and kinda holds itself and so then I put a washer and a nut on the other side just finger tighten it as you see there and we're moving right along the next uh, step is the bolt that's gonna go through the support poles and through the main pole of the basketball hoop so there are the pole braces <clears throat> you want to attach the pole braces to the bottom pole with the hardware shown it should be one long special screw that goes through just like that and it gives you two little allen wrenches to do this sometimes I use a ratchet with the same size allen tip on it a lot easier for me to ratchet on there there's many different kinds of basketball hoops so as you see there um, I put it through just like you see there onto the Allen wrench as shown that way it's easy for me to manipulate it and control it because that long bolt that I slide through there doesn't go all the way through <clears throat> it goes just to right about where it comes out the other side so that small piece as you see there I'm twisting it and I'm just hand tightening it on there for now has to sink inside to the pole and then catch that bolt and it's pretty tricky here to get all that through there so as you can see the way I'm holding the Allen wrenches that's how I do it and it makes things way easier for me to line it up and have a little bit of control over it once it catches you'll feel it catch the threads and it'll spin nice and freely and then I just snug it up you don't want to bear down on that too much because you can crimp the pole you don't want to over tighten that just nice and snug where it's not going to come off and it's not crimping the pole either so then I set my torque on my drill gun there or in this case uh, that gun there um, and it's a half inch socket tip that I'm using real quick and that's a open end wrench half inch also on the other side 
That's what I use. Comes in handy a lot of times with what I do. And you just tighten those two screws up. One, two. And then this third screw, I usually flip it just like that. Make things easier. It's uh, laying on the ground. <clears throat> so all three of those are tight now. And you can move on to the next step. So I grab the bag of hardware for the next step, which looks like attaching the little triangle connector to the top pole. There should be two holes, as you see there, one direction, that are close together. Uh, it's not the other two holes that are towards the end. You see those that are coming off the side. Those will be used later on for attaching the support arms and connecting the backboard. So you go to these two holes that are front and back. That's the bottom side there is the front, will be the front of the basketball hoop in the end. Right now it's face down. But I slide those two bolts through there and there's spacers. Slide them one and two as you see there dropped in. Then I grab your triangle piece <coughs> and connect it just as you see there with uh, nine sixteenths nuts that go on the end of that and then you just tighten those down with an open end wrench 9 sixteenths on the inside and uh, same size on the other side and tighten that little triangle down okay next step after this will be the handle assembly how to attach that uh, just tighten up these last 9 sixteenths screws it's an open end 9 sixteenths it's the only thing that will fit into that little triangle area and I usually put the drill gun on that end and an open end 9 sixteenths right in there zip zip same with the other side zip zip if it's the first time you've done it then you probably want to uh, maybe use a ratchet wrench on the bottom and then the uh, 9 sixteenths nut on the triangle side holds the bracket on there and it's uh, the only thing you can fit in there. I've tried sockets and other 9 16 tools. Is an opened end 9 16 channel locks I used a couple of times too. Anyways, that's attached. And I fold this just like you see there. That's the cap to the base. It just helps. There's a little lip there and it just screws on nice and smoothly without hitting that little plastic lip and it just locks on like so and there's a little white cap uh, keeps it airtight uh, it's a washer inside there it needs to be seated flat uh, sometimes if after you put the water in you tilt it up at the end if it's not there's you take the cap off there's like a ripple there just make sure it's seated flat screw it airtight and then it holds the water so uh, moving right along to the handle assembly uh, opening up the package on that it's right there I'm going to attach the handle and the gas spring that shock absorber looking thing right there uh, together I think the instructions say put the gas spring attach it to the pole first and then attach it to the handle down below but I find it way easier to attach the handle in the middle of the pole first uh, with the lifter arms and then attach and then just swing it up and attach the top of the uh, gas spring that you see there so I'm just opening up all the little hardware bags for this step and uh, I grab the handle and the trigger which is going to go on the inner side of that handle which is right there by me and I connect them with one of the two 3 8 bolts. Actually, that's the 3 quarter inch bolt. It's the shortest of all the 3 quarter inch bolts there. And it also happens to be the same size as the width of the handle. You can see if you push it through, it pops out about 3 quarters of an inch out. So you can put washers and the nut on there nice and perfect. So that's the bolt to use. You grab that. You put it through the handle arm and through the lifter arm. And then you attach the gas spring, as you see there. Goes through both holes at the bottom of that. Nice. And then I attach the other lifter arm on the other side, in between the handle and the spring. And 
pop it through the plastic handle and then you put a three quarter inch nut on the end of that just hand tighten so it holds it all together and just as you see there I lay it as shown and I grab the release pin and the trigger handle which is right there the release pin is a small looks like it's a bolt but it has no threads on it and there you see it there in the hand that's the what they call the release pin they used to call it the actuator pin when they used to call that the actuator <laughs> anyway the gas spring has the release pin at the bottom and it goes just as you saw me slide it right in there make it nice and center so it's holding itself spread the uh, lifter arms a little bit apart so they're more towards the handle and you just drop in the trigger handle right in between there nice and easy you got an aerial view there that's the way I do it and the video will show you here as shown you put a 3 8 bolt and attach a 3 8 nut on the end of that it goes through the handle through the trigger handle the other side of the trigger handle and then through the outer handle again that's the last bolt and there's your handle assembled then you slide the gas spring cover onto the top part of it as you see there next step is to grab the other 3 8 bolt and two uh, spacers they should be about I don't know a fingers width maybe an inch or so two spacers that slide right over that 3 8 uh, bolt that I have and then you grab the um, nut to go on the end of it and there's all your hardware for that so the first thing I do is put the 3 8 bolt through the handle plastic handle and it, then I slide a spacer a little black plastic spacer on the inside between the handle and the pole then I run the bolt through the pole first hole out the second hole put the other black plastic spacer washer in there as you see and then I slide the handle on the end of that and the 9 16 washer just uh, hand tighten it and then uh, come back later in a few and tighten them up then I move up to the top of the pole oh actually looks like I'm gonna tighten up the handle too alright first I'm gonna do that and when you tighten this handle you want to uh, it's kind of a happy medium I call it you want to have it uh, I guess flush with the end of the bolt so uh, I like to snug it a little bit more than flush so that there's no wiggling around in the pole. Everything's nice and snug but nothing's being crimped or crushed at all in any way. Um, but you want the handle nice and loose so just turn it, I don't know, maybe six or seven or sometimes ten turns so that the ha all these three bolts are kinda tightened the same equally all the way down the line. These three bolts. I use ratchets, that one's a three-quarter, so they have you switching back and forth between nine-sixteenths and three-quarters, as you see there. Tighten those up real quick, because you want that handle to be, uh, you want it to spring loose when you let go of it, and then when you pinch it, you want it to push that little pin in there. Anyway, once that is completed, you go to the top of the spring, and you run the I believe it's a half inch bolt by maybe three inches through the spring cover and then through the bracket that you installed a minute ago the triangle bracket at the top and then out the other side and through the other side of the spring cover with a half inch nut on the end of that and then zip 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 tighten it up with a half inch wrenches and you're all set to go Great. And then the next step should be attaching the backboard to the pole. There'll be uh, two sets of poles, two short ones, two long ones, that are going to go from the backboard to the pole and attach it. 
and then uh, several three-quarter inch bolts that's going to run through all of the stuff with washers and spacers. So, uh, just unbagging the hardware for this next step here. You'll see the U-bolt, uh, which is that C-shaped looking bolt with threads on both ends. Grabbing all the hardware, oh, the little short 9 16 screws to put onto the backboard. Attach these parts as you see there with those screws as shown. I always run them from the backboard brackets. I run them, I put them on the outside of that plate you can see there, and I run the screws through the brackets first and then through the backboard. And then I put the nut on the inside. That's how I do them, and then I get my 9 16 open end wrench and ratchet wrench and tighten all four of them pretty tight. That's why I use the ratchet because that's a lot of turns if you don't have a, a ratchet style. Sometimes I use the drill gun but you need a little angled uh, attachment to get in there properly. So usually hand tighten them with these ratchets as you see there. Next those things are tightened. You grab to you grab the U-bolt with the special bracket. It's going to attach to the rim to the backboard. Then you grab the backboard screws, slide a washer onto each screw, and then slide a rubber spacer onto the screw, and then slide the screw into the holes that you see there. And this, then you're going to get a special nut. It's called a T-nut, and it's going to be screwed onto the back side of that just as you see there I catch it finger tight then I spin it on there sometimes it doesn't want to spin and you just have to crank it down on there so I spin the bolt through as you see there snug it up real nice and with a, a half inch open end wrench just give it I don't know a turn and a half or so uh, so it's nice and snug it's not moving around at all but you don't want that rubber spacer to be crimped in any way so just when you think, oh, it might, might be starting to crimp, that's when you want to stop. Perfect spot. And you do the other side as well. Slide a washer, and then a rubber washer, and then a T-nut on the end of that. Snug it up tight and give it a turn or two with an open end uh, half inch wrench. Next thing that's going to be attached is the plastic cover, the rim cover poof goes onto those holes just as you see there you're ready to go for the next step which is attaching that rim to the backboard there is a layout of your hardware for the next step I grab the rim as you see there this is how I do them little handle because I attached those brackets already that's how I lift up the backboard nice and easy bingo they drop through those holes just as you see there which would be it's upside down but they'll be the bottom holes that are top right now because it's upside down and then you uh, run two uh, little half inch nuts on the end of that as you see there those are the ones and when you tighten those two real quick you want to hold the inside just as you see it there with either an open end half inch wrench or you can actually use the other end as well just hold it while you tighten these down because if you don't hold that when you zip these on as you see there boom one's done you drop it over to the other one you'll see a zip I'm holding it on the other end if you don't it'll spin and it'll get all messed up in there big headaches so the next part is the U-bolt you run it through the bracket as you see just like that poof drops through those holes nice and easy and then you're gonna put some jam nuts on there and they will um, you catch them on the end first. Oh, that will that bracket will fall through there unless you put these on real quick. That once you put these jam nuts halfway up, it kind of holds it in there. But uh, I just put my hand on the end of the back of it, like so, and I catch these. I believe they're nine sixteenths or no half inch. These two half inch jam nuts. Put them on. And I'm going to run them all the way down to where the threads stop. Kind of acting as a spacer, if you will. I guess. They 
gets screwed on there. That's what holds that thing in there. Usually it takes a couple more turns. I had a deep socket, but I probably cranked them down a little bit more to get to the end of the threads there. Once those are on, you slide a spring onto each end of the U-bolt. There's your little lifetime cover plate. <laughs> And that goes on just as you see there. Boom. I put my hand on the back part of it again to hold it. As I put the front plate on, it's about a quarter of an inch, sometimes an eighth of an inch, which is not much, it's sticking out the end. So you just push it through, push it on there as you see. Uh, catch the nuts, each one with a uh, hand tighten, just so they're on there. And then I can come back through and zip them on with the drill gun or a ratchet wrench if you want to do it by hand. It's a safer way, but either way, about a quarter of an inch sticking out is where I like it. That's way the rim is on there firmly and it's not bouncy, bouncy, wobbly, too loose. And if you want it extra firm on there and you don't want it bouncing at all, then you can tighten those springs up even more. But that's a nice, perfect, happy medium that most people like. <clears throat> so, rim is attached now and the next step is to put one of those three-quarter inch bolts through the backboard plate in the back actually you put a washer on first then you run it through the backboard plate then you run it through the the long connector arm one of the long connector arms the side that has only one hole on it that's the one that goes to the backboard the side with two holes is going to connect your pole so you run that it's called the lower extension arm and you run that through just as you see there you put a spacer in between the two spacers that are the same size those are the ones that you use here there's a third spacer it's a little shorter it'll come in later or it went on the actuator pole somewhere yeah it'll come in later anyway you run the top ones just as you see these will be the uh, top connector poles with a three-quarter inch wrench and you put that uh, plastic washer on first run it through your backboard plate and then sometimes I'm banging this one through because uh, the buildup of paint on this one, sometimes the paint buildup is just so much in there. It kind of spin it and get it through the holes and it takes the paint off all in one motion. Anyway, sometimes this can be um, a task. Yeah, it takes some effort, quite effort. Things like this is why people get to this step and say, I'm just going to call the guy. <laughs> and then they see me. So. Once you get these three-quarter inch bolts through there, nice and easy. Um, if you're going to bang it through, you want to make sure you're very careful not to mess up the threads on the other side. It's got to be lined up with that hole perfectly. And if you even think that it's almost perfect but not quite, that's when you get the wrench, just like you see me there with a ratchet wrench, three-quarter size, and you just ratchet it in. You turn it through. So as it's turning and you're pushing, it'll catch the hole and it won't mess up the threads. Once it's lined up with a hole and it's caught the hole, then you can kind of pop it through. So it's a special trick. But there you go. It's through all pieces with the spacers in the middle. You put a plastic washer on the end of that and then a three quarter inch nut. And I just hand tighten it for now. So both of them are on. Those are the lower ones. That's the top. And the top ones are laying to the left. Next part is to connect your pole main pole to the backboard and then so there's special there's special hardware for this three quarter inch bolts and washers uh, the first bolt I put in is the middle hole right as you see there and in this step the plastic spacer washer is going to go on the inside between the connector pole and the center pole because that's going to swing up and down and acts as a washer so you don't got metal to metal grinding so there's a plastic spacer in there and you just attach it in the same fashion as I did with the backboard poles to the backboard sometimes this can be quite difficult if you're on a flat surface nice flat plateau uh, it should line up perfect but if there's a little bit of a driveway there and it's on a curve you might have to put a spacer or something underneath the base or kind of twist the pole so that the holes line up so you just make that adjustment if you have to and then once it's through you can see I'm ratcheting on there nice and safely so the threads are through and then I can 
give it a couple of taps with a hammer. It's sticking out just enough to get the washer in between there, as you see, and then poof, right through the holes, lines up perfect, and it gets a three quarter inch nut on the other side, just as you see there. All right, the second uh, attachment bolt I put through is going to connect the connector arms, the lifter arms, to the bottom hole of the lower connection arms. And that last final spacer that was a little bit shorter goes on just as you see there, in between the lifter arms, keeping them separated, and the whole thing between the other arms and the pole, just as you see there. Slide a three-quarter inch nut on the end of that, bingo, ready to be tightened up. Then moving right along to the third and final bolt, it's also a three-quarter inch bolt. You run that through the first connector arm, called the top connector arm, and then put a plastic washer in between that and your main pole. This is where I merely roll it back a little bit and lift it up with the arm all in this one motion, same motion, and it just lines up and you have that great space right there where it's perfect balance as you see. Catch it through the top hole of the pole usually because the bottom ones are already lined up already that makes this top one line up automatically nice and easy goes through the other side I'm turning it I'm not just banging it all the way because I don't want to mess up the threads as you see there why is he switching from hammer to wrench and back to hammer and back to wrench just for that reason so the threads are nice it goes through there's a washer in between there on the other side you just hand tighten a three quarter inch quarter inch nut on the end of that bingo all the bolts are on now it's time to just go through and tighten all those bolts oh, before that I'm going to just pop the top cap on here a couple taps with the mallet and you're good and then uh, tightening these bolts takes a three-quarter inch socket on one end using the drill gun here and a three-quarter inch ratchet wrench on the other sometimes I do these all by hand um, that way you can get a feel for how tight it is and you just basically tighten them up flush you don't want to over tighten these but you don't really want to have them loose either so if you go through by hand after this and just check the tightness of it I like it where the it's touching the washers so you don't have wiggly washers but anyways that's completed next step getting close to finish here you grab the uh, what is it the film cover plastic that's on the front of the backboard and you peel it off because you want this off before you put your bottom plastic covers on the bottom of the rim if you leave that on you'll have like a milky residue and people say what's this it's because they didn't peel the plastic cover off the front of their hoop so after that's peeled off it's nice clean you can see the difference once the cover is peeled off, nice, clean, sparkly backboard. You take your little number two Phillips driver and carefully run these self-tapping screws attaching the plastic covers to the bottom of the rim. There's been a couple of people that say, ah, leave that off. But you, when you screw these on, it's, uh, it's a drill and a screw all in one. It's a self-tapper and you make the hole into the metal right where it goes all in one motion but be very careful you don't as you see there have your hand in front of that where you're drilling because if it slips off the screw it's not going to be good so you screw those on as shown and this is this is my trick to put in the final self tapper screws into the back part of the pole which you see here and the lower one I think is the one I just put on that silver screw you saw there boom and then the handles kind of in the way of this one so I always just pull the trigger on the handle and kind of pull and I can lift it up and then that's your final screw sometimes if you have an extension drill extension you can kind of work your way through the handle area and screw that one down if need be anyway now it's assembly complete you filled it with water it takes about five minutes make sure that cap is on correctly and it's not dripping on the back uh, and you're ready to go you raise it to 10 feet to put the sticker on. 
The sticker will be, will be put on in a minute on the back of the uh, the spring, the gas spring that you installed. It's that shock absorber looking thing on the back there. So, just as you see there, boom, I measure 10 feet and then I put the sticker with the 10 foot line right where you see there on the shock and don't want to stretch that sticker just put it on nice and easy run it straight down and then tuck it in at the top there with like a flathead screwdriver it's fine because you don't want to stretch a ruler because it's then it, you get a wrong reading so you put the net on lower it to uh, seven and a half or maybe get a ladder and put it on just as you see there nice and easy again mission complete another lifetime basketball 52 by rubber toe assembly please subscribe you guys thanks for watching answer any questions have a great day thanks